Hello, I'm Kimilia and you're watching Kini News. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has announced that the government will be submitting a proposal to improve the enforcement of policies relating to the use of the word Allah by non-Muslims to the Conference of Rulers. He said this is to make the laws clearer so that there wouldn't be any loopholes. The government is looking at amending and revoking all laws that are in conflict with a ruler's council's decision that the word Allah can only be used by Muslims in Peninsula Malaysia, with restrictions on its use for non-Muslims in Sabah and Sarawak only. This is according to Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. He said this was part of his administration's efforts to ensure that the issue may no longer be contested in any courts. Maka keputusan yang dibuat atas pandangan Pugam Negara dan serta rojok pada dan yang dibutuhkan aku ialah memperkemaskan kalau tidak kita buat rajuan kes bangkit lagi kerana ada kecanggahan jadi sebab itu kita tamatkan dengan pindah semua peraturan supaya jelas tidak ada kes yang diboleh dibawa mahkamah Anwar said this in response to Perikatan Nasional's Kota Baru MP Takiyuddin Hassan who urged the government to justify its decision to withdraw an appeal in the Jill Ireland case he also reaffirmed that the Yang Dipertuan Agong had consented to the government's decision to withdraw the appeal and that it was consulted with state Islamic councils. He said the proposal to improve the policies and regulations relating to the use of the word Allah by non-Muslims will be tabled at the meeting of the Conference of Rulers in July. Anwar added that the government will also refer to the National Council for Islamic Religious Affairs, chaired by the Sultan of Selangor, Sultan Sharafuddin Idris Shah, to seek their advice on improving the policies so that a final decision can be made. Perikatan Nasional's Chief Whip, Takiyuddin Hassan, today reiterated the opposition's stand that the government should not have withdrawn its appeal in the Jill Ireland case regarding the use of the word Allah for non-Muslims. During a press conference in Parliament today, he said the government should have allowed the highest court to come up with a final ruling. Takiyuddin also claimed he had met with Attorney General Idris Harun in Parliament today and was informed that Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's response was a political answer to questions raised. He also raised doubts over Anwar's statement that the Yang Dipertuan Agong had consented to the government's withdrawal of the appeal as the Prime Minister made no mention of further details on the matter. Yang pertamanya dia kata, Perkara ini telah dirujuk kepada Yang Dipertuan Agong dan Yang Dipertuan Agong kata ikut keputusan mensyuarat Majlis Raja-Raja. Tak diberitahu mensyuarat itu berapa hari bulan dan dia jumpa Agong tu berapa hari bulan adakah selepas kes ini ditarik ataupun sebelum kes ini ditarik. Kairi Jamaluddin has responded to offers for him to join political parties. He said it was a difficult decision and he needed more time to think about it. Former UMNO leader Kairi Jamaluddin said he did not want to rush into a decision in joining a political party. Speaking during his Keluar Sekejap podcast yesterday evening, Kairi said he needs more time to consider offers he has received from several parties. Bila kita ada peluang kedua untuk memilih parti politik, saya tidak ambil keputusan ini dengan ringan. Yeah. I don't want to decide just because PRN is around the corner. Sure. Saya tak nak pilih semata-mata sebab ada PRN uh, dalam dua bulan lagi dan saya nak menyertai pilihan raya dan saya nak dapat jadi calon sebab tu saya pilih. Saya nak pilih dengan rela hati sebab parti itu mewakili uh, nilai saya dan juga pendirian politik saya. So, I need a bit of time. Hmm. I need a bit of time. Kairi said this in response to Bersatu President Muhyiddin Yassin's open offer for the former Rambau MP to join the party and take up a Supreme Council position. He said he was not saying no to Muhyiddin's offer, but wanted to clarify that it is a very difficult decision to make. He added that if he had made a decision, he would relay it to Muhyiddin in person first as a form of courtesy. He said he had also received offers to join other political parties, but said it was up to those parties to go public with their invitations. 
Past President Abdul Hadi Awang has hit out at those who belittled past the struggle and those who have accused the party of not caring about the welfare of the people in Kelantan. In a post on Facebook today, Hadi shared about the difficulties that past faced when it was trying to fulfill its responsibilities as a state government. He said PAS faced many restrictions from the federal government, starting with Klantan, from the time the current Prime Minister became Finance Minister until today. Hadi also claimed that the state government was blocked from receiving aid from the federal government. This includes issues such as the supply of clean water, housing and basic necessities. He stated that the issues faced by the residents of the past governed state remain unresolved even during the previous government's tenure under BN. The Malaysian Association of Film Exhibitors has denied claims of sabotage over the screening of Anwar, The Untold Story. The Malaysian Association of Film Exhibitors has denied the allegations of sabotage made by the distributor of Anwar, The Untold Story. In a statement today, MAFE rejected claims of intentional hindrance or lack of support for local filmmakers. They explained that local cinema exhibitors have an average of five movie showtimes for Anwar, The Untold Story, scheduled per location, covering 70% of locations across the country. MAFE added that a wider range of showtimes are available at central cinema locations. The statement comes a day after DMY creation. The distributor alleged that local cinemas were sabotaging the film's sales target. DMY Creation Chairperson Muhammad Yusuf claimed that there were limited screening slots provided by some cinemas for the film. He added that the lack of support from cinemas for local films has detrimental effects on the film industry's growth. The film, set in the period between 1993 and 1998, tells the story of Anwar Ibrahim during his tenure as Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister as well as his fight against corruption. BN Chairperson Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has called for parties within BN to strengthen support from their members and voters. He also called on the parties not to feel discouraged by the coalition's cooperation with Pakatan Harapan. BN Chairperson Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said BN component parties, particularly MCA, should not feel disheartened by the coalition's cooperation with Pakatan Harapan. He said the cooperation is with all parties in the BN coalition, therefore, parties in BN have to respect the existence of all 19 parties involved in this collaboration. He was quoted by Berita Haryan as saying that parties involved in the cooperation should instead collaborate with each other and should not feel discouraged when working together in this smart partnership. He added that BN will continue to be empowered, not only MCA but MIC and PBRS which are part of their core components parties as well. Zahid said this when asked to respond to MCA Secretary General Chong Sin Woon's call for him to focus on component parties within his coalition and not other political partners, especially DAP. Meanwhile, Zahid also reminded BN's component parties to strengthen support from their members and voters. He said this is to give a positive image to the party and not negative impacts due to matters of the past. He said strengthening each party to expand and widen their support is more important than tending to the discouragement of any political parties. The two owners of Crack House Comedy Club have obtained court leave to proceed with their legal challenge against a blacklist against them, to register any business in KL and to reinstate the club's business license. The High Court in Kuala Lumpur has granted leave for the two owners of Crack House Comedy Club to proceed with their legal challenge against a blacklist against them, registering any business in Kuala Lumpur, and to reinstate the club's business license. The court granted leave for Muhammad Rizal Johan Van Gezel and Shankar R. Santiram to commence their judicial review over the blacklist. The blacklist against them came after a controversial stand-up routine at the club in Tamantun Dr. Ismail Kuala Lumpur in the middle of last year. The judicial review is set for further case management on June 6. 
The court will set a separate date to hear oral submissions from opposing parties over the merits of the judicial review. On August 18th last year, Rizal and Shankar sent a legal letter to Kuala Lumpur City Hall over media reports on the club's license being revoked, in addition to the owners being placed on a permanent blacklist. They claimed DBKL's decision to terminate Crack House Comedy Club's business license and to bar the duo from ever registering any further business in Kuala Lumpur was illegal, unreasonable, irrational, invalid, unconstitutional, and of no effect. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.